When Cameron Smith joined Live Golf last year, he thought he'd become the biggest star in the world. But despite getting a paycheck of over $100 million, the Australian now regrets his decision. Yeah, imagine making more money in a single day than most golfers make in their entire lifetimes and still not being happy with it. Shocking, right? What could even prompt such a reaction, though? I mean, as far as I can tell, he was actually quite happy a few months ago. The pressure I've been under all year in, in the start of an event. Um, I feel as though... Harding in Australia and prepping for the season. So what went wrong? Did he get hit with a sudden wave of realization that he's actually abandoned the PGA Tour? You know, the organization that made him into the golfer he is today. Well, sort of. Turns out the reason behind his disappointment is the lack of world ranking points for Liv. Yeah, who would have figured that one out, right? But while most other members of the Breakaway League have laughed it off, Smith says that it actually hurts. I mean, on one hand, you definitely feel for the guy. Being one of the best players in the world at the peak of your career and then joining a league that sends you spiraling down the order. I know I wouldn't want that, but at the same time, he knew what he was getting into, right? Essentially, the $100 plus million dollar contract he got, it was in a way compensation for the things he'd lose out on. With that said, I'm sure Greg Norman would have promised OWGR ranking points after a few months. And to be fair, it is kind of bizarre just how long they've been trying to achieve that status. Like, surely one of the biggest leagues in the world deserves some sort of ranking points, right? He makes another one, a two at 17 to get to four. Yeah, none of it makes any sense. Now, as far as Smith is concerned, he was at number two in the rankings when he joined Liv, and as of now, he slipped all the way down to fourth. Plus, of course, he continues to lose ground against his rivals every single day, which probably isn't a great feeling either. After all, it was the Australian's goal to become world number one. Yeah, lofty ambition, sure, but he was so close to getting there. And perhaps that the most agonizing part about this whole thing, he knows he's got what it takes to be the best. and yet he feels so powerless. In fact, at the Saudi International. Stunning view. He was trying to convince himself that it didn't matter. You know how you break up with someone and start telling yourself that they weren't worth your time anyway. It's like that for Cameron right now. He said that the only thing that matters is rocking up to a tournament and beating everyone. Now, whether that gives you world ranking points or not, that's secondary stuff. For him, knowing that you can beat seven or eight really good players in the field is enough of a reward to not feel too distraught. Though I'm not sure if even those plans are going well for him either. Cause guess what? Smith failed to make the cut at the Saudi International. Yeah, so much for thinking you're worthy of being number one, right? You know, I think this is the future of golf. I think um, it's been the same. For I mean, losing an event on the final day by a few points is one thing, but not making the cut? Not a good look for old Cam Smith. Though, to be fair to him, this is incredibly rare for someone like him. And not to mention, before this, he hadn't missed a halfway cut since last year's US Open. Oh, and even his score wasn't as bad as it seemed. Like a 73 on the opening day and a 1 under par 69 on day 2 isn't that bad. So perhaps he was unfortunate to miss out. Now I know what everyone's gonna say, all that live cash has gone to his head. Or that he's lost a grip of his game amidst all the partying. But let's just give the man some benefit of the doubt here. He's probably still rusty coming into the new year. And maybe by the time he rocks up to the live opener, things will be better. All that being said, however, it's not great for someone who literally talked about being number one before the tournament. Not particularly. I think, yes, it was a business decision as well, but, um, you know, like Mark. Though he did sort of take a shot at OWGR amidst all this drama as well. Just on the green because according to him, the golf rankings are about to be obsolete. Now, whether this is him coping with the loss or actually speaking the truth, that's for you to decide. For him, however, it's the fact that this saga has dragged on for such a long time that makes everything a bit pointless. I mean, when you've got players like Dustin Johnson dipping out of the top 30, you know something's wrong with the system. As a matter of fact, Cam Smith went as far as to say that Live Golf members don't need them anyway. And to be fair, that's what the majority of them have been saying as well. Mickelson, for instance, claimed recently that the OWGR has lost all credibility. After all, top players dropping down the rankings only hurts the majors and the strength of their fields. Of 
this caliber that are uh, moving professional golf throughout the world and the excitement. He then went ahead and also predicted that the golfing world might just scrap the system altogether and move on to a better ranking method. Not to mention, other breakaway league members have also echoed this same sentiment. So yeah, it's definitely an us versus them moment right now. Although you could also say that perhaps this is a case of grapes being sour. But hey, the whole thing is just too messy to really wrap your head around right now. Back flag. As for Cam Smith and his regret, well, Liv's second season will help with getting over his ranking loss. I mean, just think about it. When you're not playing regularly, you start thinking about other stuff, and that sort of overthinking can bother you. Yeah, I guess it's just a little bit frustrating. Uh, you're kind of uh, in the mojo there. Honestly, I think Cam's just going through that phase right now. So when Liv kicks off its second season, everything's gonna be a-okay. After all, things are looking super exciting for 2023. In fact, Smith even mentioned how he's been on the phone every day talking about things they could do with the team. For context, Liv is gonna fully shift to an NFL-like franchise formula this year, meaning we've got 12 teams of four players each. And guess what? Smith is the captain of an all-Australian team. And in all fairness, 2023 could be a massive year for the Aussie star. I mean, he he joined Liv Golf at the tail end of the PGA Tour season last year. And, um, you know, that, that back nine on Sunday, everything just went my way and um, putts just got me. And while he got paid a lot to join the controversial breakaway league, things weren't exactly positive. Sure, he was still playing well, but the hate he was getting on social media and from the tour's fans, well, let's just say it wouldn't have helped his game. So now that he's had time to settle in and absorb everything, he should be heading into season two with a much clearer mind. Not to mention, he's now leading his side too. Oh, and I don't just mean in the sense that he's the captain. Instead, he actually has a 25% stake in the franchise, meaning he's going to be making some cash from all the merch and all that sort of stuff too. Besides, let's not forget that he is the star player for Live Golf right now. Seriously, he's literally the only player in the league who's still in the top 30. If he performs well and picks up a major or two this year, that's going to totally change the dynamics of the golfing world. Who knows? Perhaps that would convince some other PGA Tour players to switch sides too. So yeah, it all hinges on him, and he needs to perform in 2023, not only for his own sake, but for the league as well. On that note, this was Cameron Smith's sad admission about joining the Breakaway League and his Plan. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Four, South African Charles Schwartzel. Hello. Oh. <laughs>